David? Well, here we go. Firstly, thank you so much for your patience. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it, because I appreciate it a lot. You've been waiting a long time, and uh, I'm, I'm very excited to get this watch back to you. No joke. And so I want to get it to you, and get it so you can enjoy it. July 1976. Look at that loom. Loom is perfect. I see the loom is missing from the from the minute hand. That's not a huge deal. I do have some hands that have original loom in them. I would oftentimes I would suggest well maybe I could just reloom that with my matching, but when you have loom this beautiful on everything it might be better to go with genuine stock because this watch is really nice and the dial looks great it's a perfect illustration of what I'm talking about when of what to buy and finding them like this between the time this came in and now these have gone exponentially harder to find but this is exactly what you want completely a beautiful clean dial white loom Lots of grot and gruck. Look at that stuff. That's the good stuff right there. Lots of that. Completely original. Hazy. But with good sharp case lines. This is a nice watch. Somebody wore this thing on a... Somebody wore this thing on a cloth strap, a nylon strap. You can see the, the marks across it. So they had this thing on a cloth band. So this thing is a 6002. It should have... Um, it should have Roman English. Let's see if I am right. No, French English. Huh, isn't that interesting? Huh, very cool. Um, you have in your little packet here, you have the extra parts. You have... That's a hammer spring, there are your buttons, they're filthy, and there is, most importantly, there is your minute counter hand. Good. Good stuff. It, As you said in your email, it is complete. Nice. So, I say, let's do this. Let's get this stuff going. Make sure I'm in the right spot. Yeah, it's exactly what you want to see, all of this. When you have a white dial, white loom rather, you're you're where you need to be. No servicing marks. None. Steel still is has some give in it. Yeah, the hammer spring is off. this over here. Let's see. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. A little hazy. 6139B. No pitting on the ceiling surfaces. That's good. Hey, that screw's loose. I just touched it and it was loose. Usually when there's, yep, usually when you find one that's loose, you're going to find multiples that are loose. This one, look at that. Oh, that one's tight enough. This one is so loose here that it's backed all the way up and it's hitting the underside of the reduction wheel. And that happens. You see one screw loose, you're going to see a bunch of them. Because they, they all vibrate loose in the same way. So, as someone I used to know a long time ago said, vibration is the devil's crescent wrench. Yeah, see, look. Do you see? 
look at this one. It was it was all the way up underneath the auto wind. It even it was even um, polishing off the top there. That is interesting. That's the way it goes. Better that than a broken screw. Come on. I always do these initial steps with the movement still inside the case. Until I get to the point that I'm messing with the, the chronograph wheel, I just leave it until I can get these parts off because this is the best possible movement holder there is in the case. For certain things. For other things, not so much. little speck of corrosion right there. Okay. Now I'm not going to try to get this running out because you've got all these screws are loose. There's no point. I'd have to tighten everything down again just to sort of get an idea of where it's at, which I don't want to do. So I've already let down the main spring. When a watch is in this kind of condition, I don't, I don't worry too much about the, the running condition, uh, because the the white loom and the dial tell us so much about the internal condition of the watch. trying to I reflect lights off those the stone faces so I can see if they're grooved or not. I'm just going to line across it. But we clean it off and I don't see it. Good. So, but I'll check that again once we get it nice and clean. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm right at the chronograph wheel here. So, I'm going to have to pull this, and let's get those hands off of there. There's your original complete stem. Uh, let's see now. Oof. Got the ancient old seal. Click. Yeah, look at that crack. Hard to believe this thing used to be rubber. Hard as plastic. You'll get it back and you can see it. Okay, let's look at that dial in hand. <sighs> yeah. So. There we go. Yeah, yeah, the, actually the minute hand is flat out broken. It's, uh, not broken, it's bent. And that's that's actually, it's weirdly hard to undo. You can always see it, even if you think it's fully straightened out, it, it, it isn't. And we've got a dial, must have happened here. we got a dial hit right here. That's from the hand when it got pushed down, it was in this position over here. I'll do my best to clean that up. That's probably going to stay, but I mean, look, in the overall, man, that's that's nice. That is perfectly okay. All right, so I got to be right on top of this to do this, so I'm going to stop this and I'll come back when I pull these hands. Okay, got that stuff off of there. There's your beautiful dial. You remember your watch is from July 76. Well, so is your dial. Usually they're the month before, but having it the month the same, that, that happens. So there we go. We know that it's a complete and original baby. Let's keep, let's keep pushing. I can take these screws out the rest of the way. Yeah, that one was loose too. I couldn't move it with my little thing, but it was not cinched down. 
Yeah, they're all loose. All loose. Yeah, this one does not have a lot of miles on it. Wow, there's almost no deformation on this upper port right here for the minute counter wheel because every time you reset it gets whacked this way and I'm, and give it enough time it will it'll push up a dimple of metal on this side and this doesn't have that at all maybe a tiny bit boy this this watch head was not well I don't know how many didn't have a lot of miles on it but it also was not reset a lot There's your hammer. I don't know why the hammer spring will. Oh, hammer spring. Hey, Willow. Can you do me a favor? Can you close my door for me? Thank you. I love you. Thank you. Okay. There is your hammer spring. It's a little tweak it held. It's tweaked to one side and down, but I can fix that. That's just not a big deal. One of the springs is filthy. Buttons are filthy, as we expected. And let's get this hand out of here. Okay, hand is in very nice shape. Yeah, this, by the way, this minute hand it's it is it is seriously jacked up it's pushed sideways it's tweaked sideways and you can see it's actually it's rippled right there on the other side there it's so the whole thing got moved over believe me i've tried straightening that kind of thing and it's just it's you, you can always see it you can make it look better but you look at the reflection and you you just you always see it. It's always there. For a watch this nice, we we got to do the right thing. Let's see. Where in the heck is? Oh, it's right in front of me. Okay, let's get these seals off. Click. It just look. It just shattered to pieces. I'll put them in the bad parts thing and you can look at them when you get them okay, let's get this one off smash uh, I don't even know where that one went oh it went off. Ooh, there it is there's part of it anyway look it just shattered like old big clay old plastic that's what they do alrighty Let's take this last spring off. Yeah, you can see this even has this um, this sort of golden grease that's on here from back in the day. Okay. Always the thing to hope for is that the chronograph wheel is in good condition. That's what we want. Oh, come now. Okay, all those big ones are out. That's what she said. It's funny, I only ever watched through the office one time, and yet, it lives with me. Ooh, look at that, another completely loose screw. Wow. Yeah, so this thing was just, just vibrated, vibrated apart. That's interesting, I wonder if he rode a motorcycle, the original owner, that is. Because this is clearly a one-owner watch.
Operating lever. Another operating lever. Shiny metal. Yeah, you can still see it's got some of that, that old lubricant on there, that golden lubricant. It's like a heavy grease. It's not an S2 or S4 or anything else like that. It's something else. A little bit. There's... Oh, oh wow. This has got a lot of extra lubrication in it. I wonder why. That black stuff there, that's the S2 from the inside of the mainspring barrel. But it has had this line of oil around here. Somebody somebody was dumping some oil on this thing. Oops, sorry. I'll have to clean that off. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. The all-important chronograph wheel. You ain't got nothing if you ain't got this. So I just hold the pinion, not super firmly, just enough to give it some friction. And I see if the clutch holds. And it does. It's a very good sign. Because these are almost like light bulbs in that they work unless they don't. No, I didn't even look at the lower. What? Oh, I thought that was loose. That was just a, an illusion. Yee, there you go. Amazing, even something as low mile as this. And look, it's not only that, is it black? It's actually slightly green. This did get a little bit of moisture inside. Not a lot, but some. Yeah, it, okay, it, it got some wear. You can see the, the brassing on the inside of the barrel. It's not a big deal, it happens. I mean, it doesn't look terrible. Definitely, though, you can see, did get a little bit of moisture in there because there's some green stuff around this mainspring arbor. And that is what happens. Water plus copper alloys equals green. I'm just undoing this real quick okay. how's that look yeah that's not bad mm -mm. nice okay I'll clean that up it just the curves are smooth and it lays flat which is which is what you want so let's okay I gotta clean this stuff up I'm going to pause, and then I'll come back to the other side. Okay, I realized I was pushing ahead without um, having uh, filmed this section. You know, I don't have to film everything. It, I, people seem to like it. I'm pulling apart the calendar now. I've already prepped the lower rainspring arbor port. I've done the machining here to get this out. I really prefer to... I prefer... I pretty much always do that with the date dial guard in place because the nice thing about the date dial guard is it has a port right here that shows the correct centeredness and so I can use this as a guide for when I'm dropping down the successively larger reamers uh, to get it hopefully to, to keep it centered because you want to you want to have guidance and you want to go slow and steady and not push down hard and have nice sharp tools so that Everything works the way it should, and you don't have to push down. Because if you push down, you can uh, you can the the tool if it's dull can push sideways, and then it's not centered. And you want to have super duper duper sharp sharp fresh tools, and you let the tool do the work. If you let the tool do the work, then you have a shot of making sure it stays where it's supposed to be. 
Not more, not too much grease. It's not bad. So yeah, I've just got to clean that up. Date wheel, off we go. Oh, and your your day wheel definitely is um, French English, which I think is very interesting. Of course, six thousand twos. Sometimes you see the two models ending up in Europe. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know anything. Yeah, this is... I don't think anybody ever took this thing apart. Come on. Come on. Why are you acting like you're welded in there? Get off. Yeah, not a lot of wear. Really, really not a lot of wear. No siree bop. Darn it. There we go. Okay. Okay. That was your center wheel, by the way. So now I've got to clean this edge up and get it ready to go. i am got to clean this up. So let's do that. Because now that I've got all the bits out, I can just get this starting line clean. A little bit of naphtha. So, I like to just take this edge off. There's just a, the way I do this, it only leaves the tiniest bit of burr right there. Just dress that nicely. A little bit of a bevel bit. Okay. When I'm doing this kind of stuff, I leave the stem and all that keyless work stuff in place because it makes it easier to move the... It holds the movement in place, the plate in place. It doesn't turn around and go places I don't want it to go. So, let us see. Okay, here. That's not what I wanted to do, but it happened anyway. Okay, getting out my special supply of custom-made lower mainspring arbor jewels. There it is. These are made only for me in Switzerland. Lots of fun. I need to have uppers made too. I just, I had a fair number of them, but I haven't done it, but that's okay. Now we have our thing. See what I'm doing. There. See if I can do it there. Sink that in just a little bit. Yeah, and that's the this anvil right here. It fits perfectly inside the depression around the jewel. And so if I do it that way, it'll sink it nice and flat.
Yeah, see? Isn't that nice? Now that looked like it was really easy. You just, boop, you just drop it in, right? But having something go smoothly like that is a result of having good prep work. Just like painting a, painting a house, painting and doing any of that kind of stuff. The painting is the very last step. There that is. See, and that's just the way we want it. Uh, one last thing I have to check is to see if the center jewel has dropped down, because a lot of times they will. You can feel it sort of, they might be at an angle. Now that feels, because this should be flush with this. A lot of times they're pushed down. So that's, now I'm going to strip the keyless works off and put it together, get it into the cleaner. And of course, before we go ahead and start all the cleaning cycles, you have to get the case apart. This did not want to come off, which is a good sign. These are nice and tight. This is a friction fit. The more often the, they're taken on and off, the, the more they wear. So when they're really tight on there, it, you can feel that it is, that basically it's the first time it was ever off since it was made, is what I would guess. That's my theory. It's an educated guess. There you go. Someday, someday I'm going to get a lens grinder and see if those can be saved. There's that, there's this. Okay. There that is. There's your little warpy thing. And you can see how much it's, the, the little amount that it's faded. See the, the deep yellow there, slightly lighter on the face. Not a lot of fading. Pretty good. Yeah, moisture tried to get in. It failed, but it tried. Okay, I gotta take some chemicals to that to neutralize that rust. And then when we come back, I'll start putting it together. Well, that thing happened again. Well, multiple things happened again, and then I was out of the running. And then I went, had to take care of some other crap. And then uh, I started assembling this, and I forgot I needed to film. But anyway, I am working on the calendar portion now. And I'm just about to check how the can of pinion and center wheel interact. So you can see I'm turning by the crown here, and there's the center wheel, and you have this nice little hole here. So you can go in, and you can stop it from turning, and then you can feel it. Uh, just the right amount. Just the right amount of resistance. It's perfect. It's good. It's very good. Exactly what we want. Hang on a second. Trying to move this thing a little bit now without destroying anything. There we go. Okay, so you're sort of upside down. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's go. Come on, come on, down, dooby doo, down, down. Come on, come on, down, dooby doo, down, down. <laughs> getting there. Well, let me just make sure 
sure that I've got that outside of the cannon pinion properly lubricated. Okay, that's kind of a big deal. We're coming right on the end of the day. Uh, the, the stuff that got out of my control had nothing to do with this watch and entirely to do with other things. And it uh, really ate up a chunk of my day. So I am desperately hoping that things are just going to go smoothly and I will be able to bolt this thing together. Before dinner is over because it's super late but I, I just I really like getting I really like being able to let these things run in overnight it just makes everything so smooth for me okay, there you are the minute wheel bridge that's all in place this is your day date corrector lever that who goes there oh it's you okay well the camera's on but I don't I don't think anybody cares oh sorry oh I know oh, it doesn't I, matter no and it doesn't you don't have to clean should I have it like a studio light on what? you know no you have a light that says uh, filming oh. <laughs> camera on or whatever the red light thing Maybe. There. See, doesn't that look nice in there? Okay, so now date dial guard. There that is. Uh, one of those date dial screws is stuck somewhere. I'll dig it up. Sometimes they're really tiny. And sometimes they just uh, they get stuck somewhere weird, but I do have others. Ah, see? There it is. God. All right. So then I'm going to go ahead and spin the calendar a whole bunch of times. Get things moved around. The reason I'm doing this rather than dropping the train first uh, um, is that's kind of my habit. Isn't that nice? No, it feels good. Feels good. Okay. Okay. Now, next. I don't know. Maybe I do need some kind of incidental music so you guys don't have to listen to me hum. It'd be like the I Dream a Genie theme or something. Not that any of you non-Americans know what in the heck I Dream of Genie is. Okay, here's your chronograph wheel. Now, I did test this. It's one of the things I did when the camera was off. Because for real critical checks, I need to be right on top of it. Need to be right where we're supposed to be. Okay. So 
So that's all lubricated up. What I was just doing is pressing this down to get this fourth wheel section away from the pinion so you get a gap in there so you can get lubrication into that spot, which is important. Yeah, because I think, going back to music, the last thing you guys want to do is hear me hum Neil Sedaka. Not that anybody who knows, knows who remembers who Neil Sedaka is. Sedaka? Sedaka? Neil Staka? I don't know, maybe it's Sedaka. I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. What's crazy is that Neil Sedaka, this musician that even when I was a young man was from the long ago, He's somebody who clearly has a lot of time on his hands because, man, his Wikipedia entry, someone has just gone to town on it. They've edited it and added stuff, and I think that's all he's got to do with his time these days. And so he sits around and edits his Wikipedia entry. He was quite bitter about the uh, Beatles. It knocked his whole gig on its ear. British invasion stopped everything. There's that. Okay, good. Always want to check that free running. Make sure it's where you need it to be. There's nothing worse than bolting down a bridge and being like, hmm, nothing's turning anymore. Gotta check that free running. Uh, how can I keep doing that? That's another tip. Whenever you're doing anything like this, make sure that you keep your eye on all the little parts that you're holding. There's nothing less fun and then getting your tweezers to where they need to be, and the thing they're supposed to be holding isn't there anymore. Okay. Hmm. There's a ratchet wheel. Now you gotta get the ratchet wheel screw. And there it is. Uh, the mainspring came out nicely, by the way, so that was always good to see. There. There's that. There's that little bushing niddly thingy here, and there is your pillar wheel. That's, that's the exciting part right there, your pillar wheel. <sighs> well, it's all exciting. I mean, come on. Everybody loves all this stuff. I mean, every school child learns from the beginning all about Seiko's pillar wheel technology. Though it's not really Seiko's. to imagine that you have like little kids today not my kids obviously because they know what watches are but most kids far from knowing what a pillar wheel might be they are probably not even sure what a watch is okay so there's our pillar wheel okay good Good. Just a teeny, tiny bit of grease to sit under that leading edge of the reset lever, because that that helps ease the ease the reset, which is good. Come, gosh darn it! Nobody wants to hear you sing, Neil Sedaka.
Okay, good. <gasps> so nice and shiny. Okay, usual thing. All the little bits. Like so. Now we got this one. Also with its lubrication. A little bit of grease. Just like that. I like to put a little bit in here because this has to interact with the pillar wheel. Click, clack, click, clack. And so anytime you have metals moving over each other, surfaces moving over each other, you generally want to think about whether or not that's going to be lubricated. Okay, come on. There. Gonna be doing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. There. Good. Exciting stuff. Okay, so now I need to think about this warped one. It is out of plane and it is compressed. Not bad. It's just a little bit right there. These things can be corrected without a whole lot of a whole lot of trouble. Yeah, it's still down. So then we come back over here. You can lift that up. Get to the point that the bits are more or less parallel. Come on, stop fighting me. I mean, I never want to overdo it, but sometimes I'm too cautious. Because it's got to have enough wink to do the job. Uh, I think that is just about there. How does such a small person have such heavy feet? Yeah, that's good. Good. Okay, now comes the fun part always testing this. Hold it down with your finger here, you catch it up underneath like this, and you move it like that, and then you rotate like that. And there, that clicker is in place. Now, it's time. 
Minute counter wheel. <laughs> I have no idea what kind of pre Beatles pop music was going on in like Australia back then. I wonder what it was. Any homegrown Australian bands I need to know about? My knowledge of Australian pop music starts with. Well, I mean, all that Australian stuff that came out in the 80s. I was about to say split ends, but uh, they are, I think, New Zealandish. Squeeze. That's Paul Carrick. I think he's English, aren't they? What do I know? Okay, yeah, that looks nice. So clean, so clean and so pretty. It's so pleasant. Okay, a little bit there, a little bit there, and then where is my S lubrication? Okay, again, always with the free running. Oh, yeah, there that is. Clicked down. Let's get this one bridge set. Okay, it's good. We have free running. Yep. Yippers. Drop that next screw. Oh gosh, I forgot to change the sh vacuum bag for her. Okay, there's that. So now the bridge is down in two or three places. Let's just confirm. Then we have to put this up here. Bloop. And there that is. See? And we have just that tiny amount of power in there and look it's running cool okay one last screw and then let's test the train see how the rundown goes see if it's smooth okay power into the mainspring Oh yeah, see, and it's nice. I put the, I got the lower mainspring arbor jewel where it should be. You can tell because of the where the teeth on the mainspring barrel intersect with the the central gear on the the pinion for the center wheel. Yeah, smooth. Okay, well that looks good. Let me just make sure how the reset goes. Come on, stop. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, good. And it resets exactly where it is supposed to. Kapoink, you can see it right there in the little window. Ah, <sighs> satisfaction. So now, unlike the last time I did one of these, I'm going to be extraordinarily careful. When I, even more than normal, when I'm putting my 9415 on my pallet stones. Gotta be careful. <laughs> Believe it or not, all the, the 9415 I need is on the tip of that oiler right there. 
I don't need any more than that. Yeah, those faces look nice. Mm-hmm. Good. Entry stone. Sounds like Sebastian's doing a screamo version of Old MacDonald. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff I still don't show for anybody else who's watching this. Uh, one of the things that's really critically important is to clean all the jewels, bushings and things with pegwood. Even after you clean them, you need to manually go over them. Because there's stuff on there you just can't see. But it certainly has an effect on how the thing runs. Okay, I can see that. Okay, good. Pre-running. Come on. There we go. Mm -hmm. Get her up to power. Okay, I can feel the bridle slipping. So that is up to full power, which means now it is time for the moment of glory. Such a glorious start, right? Okay. Hey, look, it's running. Wow. <laughs> okay. Definitely running. Chronograph on. Definitely progressing. There are basic visual checks I can do while I'm doing this. There are certain ways, if you look at the, the servicing guide, these, uh, there are certain checks you have to have. So you have this wheel here, which is the minute counter wheel, and that gear, one of the teeth of that gear should be perfectly in the center of this little window. And that's one of the checks. You look at that and you're like, okay, well, that's, that's where it ought to be. You just know the look of it. Then we're going to be looking in this window here to see the fingers coming around now to push over the minute counter. And that's going to push that over, which is going to push this over, and it's going to go click. Click. Just like that. Okay, cool. Let us check the numbers. Time to check the numbers and do the number stuff. Everyone likes numbers, even if they're rough. So 
certainly true for me, because you know what? Numbers don't lie. So I want to go for preliminary. I wish I could have a picture in picture. Wouldn't that be great? Oh, that would be so great. Picture in picture. Well, how about this? I've got this here. I've never tried to do this before. Why don't I see if I need to adjust this? So you're not going to see the numbers because I don't have picture in picture, but you can see me adjust. How about that? Huh? Mute. 54.5. Let's see what it says. Oh, we got a lot of beat error. 3.3. It is out of beat. So the way I always do this is I want to get rid of the beat error first. And it's always sort of a guess to see which way we're going to go. So I'm going to get rid of the beat first. See the stud? The stud right here, that is the... Um, that's the arm for adjusting beat because when you do this it changes the position of the hairspring which changes the position of the roller table and staff and therefore the roller jewel and changes where it interacts with the pallet fork and that changes your beat so we are now up to 3.4 let's see seriously screamo Okay, so a little move, and it just went up in beat area, yeah, 3.7, so I'm going the wrong way. So let's go back this way a little bit. Two point seven. Okay, again, I want to get that to zero. And now, of course, uh, now that down to 2.1. It was flat accuracy before with a ton of beat error. Now it's at 1.3 and we're dropping negative 35 because as I push this this way, I'm effectively making the um, hairspring longer, which means that uh, it's losing time. Come on. Sometimes these are pretty stiff. Yeah, I don't think I moved it at all. Well, a little bit. Now it's at 1.1. Okay, move that a little bit. We are at 1.0. So now, just for fun, I still have a little bit of beat error. But now I'm going to bring up the accuracy a little bit. Get it to flat accuracy. Because what that does is when you're moving these, especially in the same direction... You can be down to zero beat error here. But then you move this to get it to flat. And you'll have more beat error. Come on. We're down to 0.5 beat error. Okay. Okay. Basically no beat error. We're down to basically zero. And flat accuracy. Yeah, okay. So that is how I do it. I've got to do some other checks now or I'm right at the end of the day. Okay, so it's a good deal later. I am going to need to go back in. Um, you have some, you have worn staff. If you look at the balance, the brass thing that's going back and forth right, right quick. See how it's wiggling? Wiggling and side to side and up and down. It's not happy. So we got a bad staff. Worn pivots. So I'm going to need to go in basically and I have to do that. Uh, it's way too late. Way too late. So I'm going to have to pick this up again tomorrow. It's perfectly in beat. It's just we got low amplitude. Yeah. Yeah. That shimmy ain't supposed to be happening. So it's running, but I mean, it's just low amplitude. Very interesting. You'd think such a low miles piece wouldn't have that issue, but you just never know.
Okay, so I'm going to have to pick this up tomorrow. I always like to get that big blast of, yeah. In the meantime, I am going to let it run in. I'll let it run in overnight and give a chance to everything else to work in and then deal with the balance. Okay, it is tomorrow. And uh, last night, I couldn't, I couldn't put it to bed, so I couldn't put myself to bed anyway. So I went and um, I redid the balance, and I've been letting it run in overnight. So this is about 14 hours power down. I still might want to look at that pallet fork, but eh, we're getting there. Okay, so now doing some basic stuff. There's the, there's the, I just swapped out the whole balance. There's bad stuff is in there and you'll get that. You can play with it. So now there's the old hand, right? There it is. Oh, broken and bent. Somebody going pork on it. And we have my handy dandy genuine 6139 hands. Get these out of here. Okay, let me pull these out and uh, see if I can find one that should do the job. But that looks pretty good right there. Uh, so let me get on that. And that, my dear friend, is that. So Dave, I want to thank you so much. Uh, oh, there's the... Uh, what is today? God, what a strange batch of days it's been. It is currently, it's not the 31st. There is no 31st of August. I didn't change my thingy. So we are going to Monday. Is today Monday? No, it's Tuesday, right? No, it's Monday. Is it Monday? God, what a crazy week and weekend it's been. That's so bizarre. There, Monday. The first. And it is currently... Oh, God, it's another whole day. He's gone. That's ridiculous. Doing the balances on these things is just nuts. 6.56. Another day. Another day gone. Another weekend gone. Jeez, oh, Pete. So, there's the genuine original Seiko hand. It's not new old stock. Those are hard to find, but it's very, very good. It matches your other hand, and it matches the um, condition of the loom, which is good. There we are. It's a super nice watch. Just enough wear to be, just enough wear to be wearable. Everything works as it should. Stops, starts, resets. Uh, again, the only weird twist we have was the bad balance, but that's been handled, and the rest of it is good to go. Whew, that's a beauty. This has been, you know, you the, the thing is, is you think that you you know what you're in for when you see the outer conditional watch, and generally you're right. Mostly, I think I was right, but man, I was not expecting balance issues. Okay. That's it. I'm done. Thank you so much.